Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Mike Adkisson, President and CEO of the Chicago Zoological Society, and I am here this morning with Raquel, one of our lead animal care specialists, and we are standing in front of Regenstein Wolf Woods, where we've just had an exciting morning with some of our new Mexican gray wolf pups. Had the chance to do some neonatal exams with our animal care staff and our veterinary team, doing a wellness checkup on some of these pups at their uh, six week age point right now. So we looked at two pups this morning, but this litter started out actually having five pups in it. So tell us a little bit about where those other three pups went, Raquel. So we had some pups born here at Brookfield Zoo at the end of April. This is a, a first litter for this pair here at Brookfield Zoo. And we actually sent three pups to the wild as part of a cross foster program through the Mexican Wolf Recovery Program. So the genetics of these wolves in the wild are very important for the wild population. And one great way to introduce new wolves to the wild is to do so when they are very young by putting them into a den with wild puppies. So we were here bright and early in the morning to, to collect puppies out of the yard. So there's a lot that goes into it. Fish and Wildlife Service has to monitor the wolves in the wild and look for packs that are denning at the same time as our pack here at Brookfield. The Fish and Wildlife Service team there, the interagency field team, uh, they are working to find the wild den at the same time we're starting kind of operations on the ground here and we fly them to the release site which is in Arizona and New Mexico and, and when we get the pups there they put our pups into the den in the wild and they are then raised as wild wolves. So I got to go along with a vet tech because the puppies did have to be fed along the journey. But what the most meaningful part of the journey for me was seeing the habitat that the wolves live in and seeing how the livestock and the wolves really are in the exact same habitat, sharing the same space. So really an incredible program um, and an example of where our animals here at Brookfield Zoo are making a real world impact in the conservation of this endangered animal in the wild. And that Mexican gray wolf population in the wild right now is around about 200 animals or so. A very endangered population and one that there's a lot of conservation efforts going into. And when we think about that population and the threats facing it, one of the biggest threats facing that population is, is people and, and human activities. And talk to us a little bit about what that, that looks like and what that perceived threat around wolves is. Yeah, so um, wolves and humans have a very interesting history here in the United States. In this particular species, there were campaigns to actually eliminate them from the Southwest. And so there were bounties on their head and they were killed to almost extinction. In fact, they were extinct in the wild for a while. So the recovery program started with the passing of the Endangered Species Act uh, to, to get this population um, back to the wild. And so zoos bred these animals and then started re-releasing them. Um, and so obviously there's a lot of ranching in the southwest where these guys live. And they do occasionally take cattle. The land that they, the recovery site is on is multi-use land. So it's owned by the, the government. So ranchers will lease out that land and they will graze their cattle on that land. So it's not their preferred choice of food, but it's they're in the same exact habitat. So sometimes they take livestock. So that's a big point of contention between ranchers and wolves, but also people are afraid of wolves. And it's not just in the Southwest, it's pretty much everywhere wolves live. And so there's this perceived threat that wolves are going to um, attack people, but it just doesn't really happen. And so since the Mexican Wolf Recovery Program started, there has not been one documented case of a wolf attacking a human. So difficult conditions in the wild for these animals and that human animal interaction is so tight on top of one another. And really this is a conservation story that can only be successful if we're able to engage that human element and really make a meaningful message and, and change people's attitudes and mindsets towards these animals. The next time you're out here at Brookfield Zoo this summer, be sure to stop by our Regenstein Wolf Woods Habitat and see these two pups as they continue to grow up this summer with mom and dad wonderfully playful animals to watch and a great conservation story so we hope to see you out here soon.